so I have a 2015 versus 650 which I bought used about a year ago with uh, about 20,000 miles on it the second owner of the bike it was very well maintained very clean I wanted to do a comparison between the 2015 and the 2022 versus 650 to see if there was any real reason for somebody to buy a new one over the used if they were to be looking to buy one This new display is awesome though. Man, that is crisp looking. Fully digital. Um, it does have a, uh, a phone sync. It syncs over with something called Bikeology, I believe. And it allows you to see a lot of stats from the bike on your smartphone. Um, but you can also see some things like incoming calls and whatnot on the dash. Uh, seen a headset or something of that nature, you could answer the call but see who's calling you before you answer it. That's kind of cool. Personally, I find that unnecessary. I don't like to answer calls while I'm riding. I like to disconnect from phones. Transmission feels the same. Suspension feels about the same. So this windscreen is adjustable. It does okay for bucketing, but I'm only going 40 miles an hour. I wish this guy would stop swerving next to me. Now this model does have traction control. I did spin a little bit in that dirt just now. I wanted to test to see if it would do anything. Didn't feel unpleasant. It's still a really comfortable bike. One of the bigger complaints of my the 2015 is the seat pitches you forward a bit and causes some discomfort after riding for a while. It doesn't feel like this seat's doing that. It's actually pretty soft and squishy. So the gentleman in front of me on the Versus 1000, it's his first time ever riding on this type of bike. I'm curious to see what his thoughts are afterwards. I told him that last time I rode it, I fell in love with it, but I can't afford it. Huh. Downshifts are a bit clunky, actually. Take some force to uh, to click it into gear. I'd say this bike stands right with my bike. I mean, it's seven years newer. It's got some cool features to it, but I don't see it really as an upgrade. MSRP on this is just over $9,000 uh, for the non-LT. For the LT version, you're closing up on $10,000, uh, but that gets you saddlebags, uh, hand guards. You can buy all those parts aftermarket for this one. Stick them on there. If you want the saddlebags, piece it together the way you want. One big change is the gear indicator. There is a gear indicator, which is awesome to have, especially when riding off-road. Whoa! Oh no! Are you okay? The kickstand's down? Okay. Yeah, I don't think you can get the bike started. How about you guys go up that way into the parking lot? We gotta get out of the road. 
I, I've been doing demo rides for 20 years almost. I have never had somebody crash on a demo ride. Oh my gosh. That poor man. His ego must be shot to shit right now. So I've got nobody behind me now. I really want to do a wheelie. Oh good, the bikes did catch back up. Cool. Good, good, good. They're coming. I bought a used one mainly because I found a good deal on one that was clean. But after riding the 2022, I would do the same thing again. I wouldn't spend the extra money because it at this point those bikes are now closing in on ten thousand dollars and you can get one for half of that used and they're virtually the same bike the the engine is the same the transmission felt very similar suspension was the same uh, there are a lot of new features that are cool but not double the cost cool at least not to me the versus still stands as one of the most comfortable bikes i've ridden I was just chatting with a friend of mine about his desire to have a vehicle, a motorcycle that can do trails, but also be ridden on the highway. And it's just, it's really hard to find something that can do both. And the Versus is an attempt to do that. When talking with somebody else today about the Versus in the woods, they were like, well, it's kind of heavy for that. And I said, yeah, so is the KLR 650. The Versus isn't meant for it, but it can do it. Uh -huh.